Good evening, and welcome to Women. Our topic this evening is Toys for Children. My guest is Jane Galvin Lewis, who is founder and co-director of a training company known as Social Change Advocates. Jane, welcome to the show. Thank you. What were your favorite toys when you were a kid? Uh, well, I really enjoyed uh, a doctor's bag and uh, uh, dolls, but strangely enough, I enjoyed them uh, for switching the stuffings and heads. <laughs> I was really the original transplant person, I think, and uh, operating on them. I liked magnets, too, I remember, and mixing things. I enjoyed that kind of thing. Sounds like they weren't typical girls' toys. No. Or, or, or that you didn't use them in a typical way. No, I don't think so. And I think that um, toys then m were more makeshift. You know, they were not half as elaborate as toys are now, and they were very, you made things out of, out of other kinds of things and kind of make-do toys. And I'm not making a value judgment particularly, but that's the way I remember them anyhow. Do you think that children's play is really children's work and that toys are the tools? Yes, I think so. I think that uh, a tremendous amount of fantasy is lived through, uh, through toys, and, and toys really provide an education. And very, a lot of subtle messages, I think, um, come across uh, by the use of toys, and they're used that way very definitely. Psychologists are always writing and, and telling us why we buy toys for our children uh, as parents, and some of the reasons aren't too terrific. Yes. Uh, I think that, that a lot of parents live through the toys themselves. They kind of relive uh, fantasies and, and they set goals, I think, oftentimes and, and give messages about what they think the child ought to be through the kinds of toys that they buy. They're oftentimes blackmailed, too, I think, with all of the advertisements uh, into buying a tremendous amount of toys that, you know, they don't really understand. You know, many parents will say, uh, oh, you know, I don't know what this thing is that's called the such and such, but I'm going <laughs> to, I've, I've got to go down to Macy's and make sure that I have it. Uh, they don't do half enough research, I think, about toys. M maybe we'll have time to get into that a little bit more yeah. later. What do you mean, Jane, when you talk about sex stereotyping in toys? Well, when the actual purchase of the toy rests on solely um, what the, the sex of the child that the toy is, is for um, is, um, and the fact that, that oftentimes, and most of the time, we think in terms of, of this kind of toy only for a little girl, or this kind of toy only for a little boy, that the role models are built in completely um, with, with what the toy is. For instance, you want an example? Sure. Well, for instance, um, in thinking in terms of, of the field of medicine, um, the doctor's kit is always for the little boy, and the, the packaging will indicate a little boy playing with it. And the nurse's kit is always a little girl, instead of having a girl and boy um, pictured in the packaging um, on, on both kinds of, of, uh, of sets. And this is clearly, you know, a stereotypic situation when it's seen only for one, one kind of child. Some people think that toys themselves are, are sexually anonymous, and it's the way we package them and present them that makes them sometimes offensive. I would, I, I would agree with that, 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 that they are. And, and best proven of that is that, that youngsters will make, um, do, you know, they will make makeshift things of the kinds of things that they themselves as people uh, want to play with. Um, and, you know, they will make dolls out of rags, or they'll make, uh, and I don't mean rag dolls particularly, but just a blanket will oftentimes serve. I had one of those for a very long time, as a, you know, as a, as a baby kind of thing. Um, or, or, the, or a bag will serve, uh, a pocketbook can, can serve any number of, of purposes. And they will make out of that what, you know, what it is. So it is the packaging, I think, and the kinds of attitudes that people have about the toy that make it what it is. Can you be a little more specific about the packaging? Say that sports equipment, for instance. Well, um, most packaging now, there are some companies, I don't want to name any, but no. there are some that have begun to do a little bit better about this. But uh, oftentimes the packaging will indicate completely, you know, on the pictures. Um, or it might even say in the words, you know, a, a little boy's dream is a whatever. Um, and there will be only a boy on the package, or, uh, and you find the same kind of thing with racial stereotyping. There will only be white children playing with, with uh, the toys and, you know, just, you know, ruling out an entire market. Um, or uh, only a little girl on the package pictured playing with this particular thing, even though it might be something that both boys and girls could enjoy having. And this creates a mindset. It creates how we think about the toy. It creates how we think about the career that the toy may be, uh, may be designed toward. Or the kind of, and it's a very limiting kind of thing because um, when, I, when I was a child, jacks were very popular, but for girls. Um, now, you know, the, the dexterity of the fingers um, and math 
uh, ability was was greatly enhanced by uh, by certain kinds of games. And it's been shown that, that uh, little girls oftentimes have a better facility in certain areas in the earlier grades, reading, for instance. Um, and then in the later grades, you know, boys kind of catch up. But why punish a boy child, you know, uh, in that area when he could be learning right along, learning those same kinds of skills or developing his body in the same kinds of ways? And then when, the, when ch children get older, we punish the little girls because physical development is not stressed, you see. And so it's, it's not only a... a philosophical thing, I think it's a very practical kind of thing. It's not only theory is what I'm trying to say, is that it, it's a very practical kind of thing that we need to think about. You know, do we open up all options for youngsters? Which I don't think we do with packaging. Well, what recourse do parents have? I mean, say you're going to buy a toy and the package is obviously sexist and you don't want to give that message to your child. What do you do? Well, <laughs> there are any number of things you can do. Of course, you can complain to the company. Uh, about that, but as far as as purchasing for the child, you can remove it out. Of, you can take it out of the packaging, um, and and buy the toy for the child and not for the sex, you know, not X-rated sex, but but for the for the um, the, the sex uh, identification of the child, and just buy what you think that child might enjoy having, and um, you can do away with the packaging. That's you know simple enough, and just rewrap it or just have it you know wherever. Um, and I do think that people should make note to the companies uh, about their, both their pleasures and their displeasures um, of the packaging. You said and before... You to the Attorney General's office, too, if you well, think it's who, who regulates the whole thing? Is it the FDA? Or? Well, they have a part in it, but actually the, the companies pretty well have, uh, have free reign. Of course, time will tell what Title IX will do with this, um, whether it will apply. I don't think the teeth are too strong in that now. Um, and I don't know whether it will apply to toy companies or whether they will comply. But I do think that uh, there's certainly, if enough mail comes in, they're very interested. In one thing, that's what business is about, is pleasing the client. And they're very interested in the kind of mail that they get and the kind of, of response that they're getting from their consumers. What, what kinds of toys, without naming any companies, mm -hmm. um, do you think most perpetuate this kind of thing that you're talking about? Well, I think sports equipment. Is, is usually very much geared only for little boys. Um, trucks, uh, those kinds of toys, uh, transportation toys are very geared to little boys. Dolls, of course, are geared uh, to little girls, except for the fact that, that when uh, Madison Avenue tells us it's all right for little boys to play with dolls, they call it a toy and not a doll, and they make it G.I. Joe. Um, and poor G.I. Joe has gotten more nurturing and love and kissing and dressing <laughs> and undressing. He never gets to fight, usually. But um, those are the kinds of things. And I think, I think the, the whole, I don't want to name the toy, I almost said the name of the toy, but the glamour dolls are just really offensive. That, that entire uh, perpetuation of, of the theory that women are, are, are toys, literally, and that they're to be um, just glamour objects. And to start a, a little girl thinking about that. What, what message is she getting from oh, that? Oh, I think she's getting all kinds. Well, one, if she doesn't look like that, um, what does that say to her? If she's uh, the, the the glamour dolls, of course, were mainly uh, made out of the out of the entire kind of middle class white uh, perspective. So if she's a little black girl, you know, there's automatically got to be something wrong with her. If uh, if she's not uh, uh, and she's not particularly what our norm or our standard tells us is pretty, uh, that says an awful lot about her uh, negatively, um, and it just sets up an entire standard of of losing of not feeling acceptable no matter what she is. Is there a problem the with... The ugliness syndrome. Is, is there a problem with black dolls for little black girls anymore, or is that something that's long ago been taken care of? I mean, is it, I mean are there on the market? Yeah. Oh, there are many on the market. I don't... I, some are, are better than others, and I think that, that uh, oftentimes they, they will just take a, a white doll and paint it. At least that's the way it, it oftentimes looks. Um, and there is very little concern more and more, I think you see it, but there's not very much concern with the different kinds of black looks that there are, um, which is, is, is unfortunate. But there are black dolls available. I wish I could recommend one, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some toys that, you know, some parents are complaining about at this point. It seems that the toys are having more fun than the kids. You know, the kids are not actively participating. You wind up the toy, and the toy does all this incredible... Yeah, the battery, right. battery run things, and yeah. How, how do you feel about that? Is that as damaging as some people believe it is? I don't really know. I think, though, that it is, it is tremendously limiting to creativity, because the toy does it all. You know, you can't really play 
which is what you're really supposed to do with toys, I imagine. Um, and it, it, uh, it, I think it's, it's damaging. I don't know how damaging, how damaging is, according to what you're saying, but I do think it is very damaging because the child doesn't really get to do anything with it. You know, it just, it, it's kind of just fascinated by, by what the toy is doing. Are there other differences between um, so-called masculine and feminine toys? Differences that we have. The discussed? pricing, I think, is is an area that. Uh, like how is how is what's the difference there? Well, I think that that boys' toys tend to have more value. Uh, they're bigger and they're grander and they're more fun. Um, and there is a value judgment there. They tend to cost more money. They tend to be more complicated. They tend to, you know, have more initiative. Like chemistry sets are mainly. Uh, uh, thought of for boys, and when I when I say these kinds of things, I don't mean that that's the way they should be thought of. I'm saying that most people relate certain kinds of toys to certain kinds of youngsters, and um, I think that that you know the the more the, the the toys that are more interesting and cause a child to to use more initiative and and learn more from the toy, um, oftentimes end up being uh, toys that are set aside for boys in most people's thinking. You feel Housekeeping sets or, you know, for girls. And you feel strongly that there are some messages that children should be getting. And, yes. and you've brought some examples. And I want to make it clear at this point that these toys are not for sale. Right. <laughs> that they're just examples that Jane has brought to show what she means by uh, some good toys that, that should be given to children. Um, maybe I'll hold some of these up and you can maybe talk about them. Okay, that's a, uh, an early childhood uh, uh, lotto card. Um, and we've made several sets, and they, of course they have the, uh, the matching card that, uh, that would go uh, with it. Oh, I see. You see, and it's like a bingo game, and it's an early childhood technique, and Lotto is used quite a bit uh, to teach any number of things, and that particular card that you just showed was the, the uh, female nurturing role, and the card that you're holding now um, is the male nurturing role, and you'll see a male bathing a little girl and piggybacking with her and drinking out of a straw with her and hugging her and being affectionate. And we think that that's a, a kind of thing that many men do nurture, but they don't get credit for it. And, and they're made to feel badly if they do take that kind of role. Um, that card is a little girl uh, enjoying all kinds of people, an older person, as you'll see, and a, and a young friend and a parent. What's the message there? That, uh, that little girls can have all kinds of friends and relate to all kinds of people, and the children in general relate to all kinds of people and, and uh, can have all kinds of friends and be active. I was trying to tell by looking at them, you know, what the message is, and I, I don't know on this one. Oh, that's an active. She's doing all kinds of activities. So that's the active girl to kind of, and you might turn the, uh, this one the right way so that you can see her with her headsets. I love oh. that, that picture of her with the headsets on. And, you know, the, the, the kind of getting a, away from the totally passive little girl image. And here you'll see her involved in all kinds of activities. She's being creative by painting in the one thing, riding the horse. Uh, sitting, eating, and then li listening to her headsets. Just I, being very I think active. that's what I meant before when I was talking about the toys that seem to have more fun than the children. It mm -hmm. seems that if what you're saying is right, that uh, that's more damaging to little girls because it further encourages them to be passive. Yes, I think that's true. And, and, and girls' toys are passive toys, you know. They're m and most of the toys that are created and packaged for little girls um, are, are uh, uh, one option limited in the sense that most of them are housekeeping toys or nurturing toys. They're not uh, toys that are geared toward anything else. What else do we have here? Okay, Let's now see. this is a, a, a the puzzles um, have several themes. The one that you're holding now is a female barber and one of the themes in the puzzles is the non-stereotypic uh, image of woman and that she's doing, that she has an option. If she wants to be a homemaker, fine, that's wonderful, as long as she chooses that because she wants to do it and not because she thinks it's the only thing that's appropriate. And so we're showing some non-stereotypic things. This is the nurturing male again, this little girl drinking uh, out of a fountain, and her father's there, some nurturing male is there taking care of her. We have to clear off some of clear this here. We're the, getting right, okay. puzzled here, puzzled in. Uh, Here's another one. And this, um, you know, men are oftentimes pictured in, uh, in double life. They're pictured as a, as a career person and they're pictured as home people. Um, and women are not. Women are, are asked to make the choice. Um, and most women don't make that choice. Most women combine. And this puzzle is kind of an unusual one. It's a woman who works with her child and her little baby is on her lap as she is at her desk. Is she not someone who works at Ms. Magazine? She certainly <laughs> is. She's a Ms. Magazine employee. And this. A little girl being active again. She's fixing her bike. 
which is a mechanically inclined kind of thing, is usually associated with little boys. I know so. some bigger girls who are now trying so to fix their car. <laughs> yes. We have some oh, this is a very nice photograph. Yes, that's a, uh, the interracial uh, approach. It's, a, it's not only a, a child relating to an older person, but it's, uh, it happens to be a, an interracial situation. It's a little child's grandmother and, and the child. Can and of course, you know, any number of messages can be gotten uh, from these uh, puzzles, and, and we kind of leave that to the child. We know the message that, that we've put there, but there are many other kinds of things. And this is uh, kind of lauding the, the leisure time. This is a man in his garden, and it's a gentler thing for a man to be doing. And, um, we, you know, there's so much stress on the work ethic and the career and, and that kind of thing that we thought it would be nice to say it's nothing wrong with enjoying yourself and doing some things that you enjoy. Oh, we're missing a piece. Yes, I think we are. That's um, the active woman, and uh, that happens to be a picture of a uh, well-known athlete. May I name her? Sure. It's Wilma Rudolph, running in the Olympics. And you, ha you brought some other things that we yes. have on the coffee table here. Now, these are uh, block accessories, and uh, that's also... So what do you mean by block accessories? Block accessories. They are um, used usually in fantasy play with blocks in early childhood and, and youngsters do all kinds of things with them. Uh, these particular ones um, can also be used as, as doll figures. They can be used by the uh, parent or the teacher in an educational situation to show different kinds of things. And you'll see that what we did was to say, we're trying to say to youngsters with these uh, kinds of toys that all kinds of people can do all kinds of things. Blacks can do things, women can do things, Asians can do things, fat people can do things, people with glasses can do things, and men and women can do things. Uh, and they can oftentimes do the same kinds of things. And you'll see on the screen now the uh, uh, postal workers, uh, male carriers, and there's a male and a female, and the construction workers, a male and female. Um, we've got uh, the police officers which are, are male and female. So we're not uh, saying that the roles should be reversed. We're saying the roles can be shared. There is a male and female uh, musician, a woman, a conductor, and a male playing a trumpet. And uh, our physician, you can't see our, our female physician too well, but she's there uh, in the back, and she is, she is Asian. And the black uh, male, excuse the pun, there. Um, and uh, your athlete. It's, uh, male and female. So we're getting across there the fact that men and women can do things, not that all, that all men should do one thing or all women should do something else, but that men and women can do the same kinds of careers oftentimes. I noticed also that there's a various shades of black there. Yes, yes. We tried <laughs> that to wasn't do an different accident, kinds of hair. No, no. We tried to do different kinds of hairstyles. We tried to do different kinds of skin tones. We tried to have fat people and people with glasses, you know, to, because we have a very, very myopic approach to what is right. And um, what we're trying to say to the child is whatever you are, make the best of what that is. And, uh, All right, what happens if parents, say, of a six-year-old child are suddenly getting this message? And do you remember there was a, a skit in Ms. Magazine at one point written by Renee Taylor and Joe Bologna about the parents who bought their son a doll and their daughter a truck, mm. and then S they sent them happily up to their rooms, and um, do you remember what happened after that? No. Well, the, the little boy was holding the truck, um, holding the doll, and pushing it across the floor and going vroom, vroom, and the little girl, um, yeah. you know, had her yes. toy and yes, was I rocking did. it like a Rocking doll. It. Yes. Uh, it's, it's too late, isn't it, after a certain point? I mean, well, there are other influences, right? Yes, I think culturally and racially, the, uh, there have been many, many studies that show that by age two, and certainly by three, our cultural messages are set. And we know what our roles are. We know what to think of ourselves. We know what to think of others. We know what's expected of us in many, many ways. And um, this is certainly true, I think, sexually, and it's especially since sex um, identification is first. Um, we, we, we relate that way. And so I, I, that's a possibility. It was a very funny skit, but uh, and it, it is a possibility that by a certain time. But I don't think we should give up because it's it's you know I don't think we should say it's too late. But you should you you should be very sensitive to it from the beginning. I think. Oh, so it would seem to that's me that's why we tried to start kind of at the beginning. Yeah, another danger might be of of parents who are suddenly catching on to this, buying their children neuter toys mm -hmm. and switching the roles, the sexual roles, instead of uh, adding the variety. Yes, I think adding the variety. And I don't think that, it, that, that we're not talking about role switching. We're talking about sharing responsibility, sharing careers. And basically what we're talking about is opening options. 
let's say, and not limiting people, not limiting boys or limiting girls. I think that that whole macho Superman um, kind of approach to little boys is very unfair and very burdensome uh, to a little to to boys and to men. Um, and it's it's not a matter of of saying that that you should switch things, but to to be more humanistic about things, I think is what we're saying, and open the options. So it's really op it's really freeing men and and giving opportunity to to women. Okay, what practical are you really telling parents to do? Well, several things. I think one, really monitoring television and really kind of doing CR with TV and and having looking at television with youngsters and um, you know these advertisements that are just you know overwhelming need to be looked at very seriously um, and. Uh, also, as I said before, writing to toy companies, just, you know, keep a little stack of postcards or something and just keep the mail going in because they do listen. Also, if there's something particularly offensive, you can always appeal to the Attorney General's office and just really question whether the consumer should be exposed to it. Yeah. I, I, do you think most parents are apt to do something or... I don't The know. pressure is terrific from kids. I mean, I don't know if you well, have children. Well, packaging, the packaging that, um, that has, has changed, I am sure, came from uh, pressure. In addition, oftentimes it doesn't take too much. When a, mar when, when, a, when a company realizes that a market is there, they tend to, uh, to want to change. Now, I think that one of the best examples of that is the Lionel packaging and the Lionel advertisements now for trains for little girls or trains for children instead of trains for boys. And I'm sure that the, the letters that they received from women stating that uh, they would have loved to have had a train as a child made the Lionel realize that 51% of the market was, <laughs> was lacking, you know, and they, uh, they've, they've done, you know, some... It, it's awfully hard for parents to resist, though, you know, a pair of eyes yes, looking up yes. at you and saying, that is the most super gun in the world, and I... Yes, but I think that, you know, we, parents do make choices when they want to, um, and so I just think that, you know, we oftentimes make choices... Uh, in, in one area are financial choices and we don't make social choices and I think we have to start making some social choices. I think the expense of toys is incredible now. Um, we were doing a workshop not too long ago for Christmas buy and we were recommending simple things like magnets and, and a, a bag that can be used for any number of things and youngsters really love these simple kinds of things. Not that they don't lust after what they see on television. I'm not saying that that isn't a problem but I think that oftentimes that that thing that they've seen that thirty five dollar whatever is broken in two days after it's after it's gotten or the batteries have run down and they and the child will oftentimes after getting it not even miss it and wouldn't they have had far more fun with you know a stethoscope which is not particularly uh, uh, that expensive but is a lot of fun um, or a toolkit with with miniature tools not children's tools but just little miniature tools that you get the hardware store if they're safe to use you know hammers and those kind of things and and making a little toolkit or a lock and keyboard which is great and you know there's non-toxic glue out now that is very strong you can put on a board with the keys the matching keys it, it improves dexterity it's a great toy and, and youngsters love that kind of thing dress up clothes what, what's what better than to than to dress up and you know taking teenagers old clothes and ironing them and pressing you know making them nice and neat and clean and folding them up and having uh, having all kinds of clean dress up things uh, hats are, are great shoes high heels and big old boots and, and things like that gloves and hats and pocketbooks I mean, they're marvelous things I'm leaving right now I'm gonna go play <laughs> <laughs> What, another problem for parents is labeling on toys. It'll say child tested, educational, mm -hmm. uh, very often it will give an age span. Uh, how seriously should parents take that, do you think? Well, I think that they should first look into the group that's, that's uh, authorizing it. Um, we were talking before and, and um, one of the things that has, been, that has come out is that some of the seals are purchased. In other words, you can just pay a certain amount, pay a fee like a subscription to a magazine and, and buy that seal and then that product will be advertised in that particular seal's magazine. So, you know, that kind of thing isn't too safe because if you can just purchase it, um, there hasn't been very much uh, testing. So I think that there are some that are more reliable than others and you should really look into what one is authorizing the toy that, that you're, is it really child tested or is it really safe? looking at what kinds of glues are used, looking at the kind of construction, make sure that the edges are all beveled so that they're not sharp. What is a beveled edge? Do we have one? Around, you? yeah, these for instance, um, you see how they're very smooth mm -hmm. and uh, they're, 
you know, you, they're, so that they don't, they're not, they can't be dangerous or a rounded kind of thing, not metal that can jab or cut. Are, there, are, there are some toys that are supposedly scientifically designed. Mm -hmm. Are they better because of that? Well, that again, it depends upon who, you know. Some of them are. Some of them have, a lot of research has gone into them. Um, however, I still think that life experience provides a lot of toys that, uh, you know, that no one has to sit down and research. You know, you know certain kinds of things uh, about human beings. They call those scientifically uh, researched toys are quite expensive also. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a checklist of some kind that parents can sort of say, all right, this, 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 and this, and the toy seems to be, you know, somewhat acceptable? I mean, that you could sort of give to us. We have about two minutes. Okay, I think sturdiness. I think expense. Um, the educational value. Uh, safety. I think all of those kinds of things should be thought about very seriously before purchasing a toy. And the kind of message that that toy is going to give to L the child. Like what? Expand on that a little bit. The message? Yeah. Well, is the, is the child going to be limited by, the, 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 uh, by playing with the toy? Is the child going to get a negative social message? Is the child going to begin to feel inferior or superior because of the, because of the toy? Is the, is the uh, message going to devalue what that child happens to be all about um, in any way? Are there lots of groups around the country who are interested in that kind of thing and who have information available to people who, who need it? There are some, yes. Um, I think, uh, well, of course, our organization, Social Change Advocates, would be happy to, uh, to send out anything. I think uh, Women's Action Alliance. Uh, ACT. Some, yes. Uh, and I, f I forget what that stands Children's for. Children's Workshop um, has some, uh, some interesting things on toys. Um, if they could, if they drop a line to us, we would you know if there's anybody who's interested, we can get the information out to them as to what other organizations there are that are working on some things. There are quite a few small women's groups like in Michigan that are working on on toys. Jane, thank you very much. Thank We're you. out of time. Thank you for watching. Good night.